Welcome, friends, to our last day of story time for this week. I have decided to make today a cozy day. So I hope you are in your favorite cozy clothes. And let's talk a little bit about our favorite ways to be cozy. One of my favorite ways to be cozy is to knit. And knitting helps me feel really relaxed and the things that I knit help keep me warm. Did you notice that I wore a different sweater every day this week? The sweaters are actually ones that I have knitted myself over the years. They're right here and I have even this one that I'm wearing today. And another way that I like to stay cozy is by drinking something warm like hot chocolate. Do you like drinking hot chocolate? My favorite time to drink it is right after I've been outside in the snow. <laughs> and of course, we have to have marshmallows in our hot chocolate. And these are homemade marshmallows from, um, they were actually given to me as a gift from one of our Wonder School friends. Just right. And another way to stay cozy is to bundle up when we go outside. Here is, oh, something. Something fell out of Maple's scarf. It's pictures of animals. Wow. They were hitching a ride in your scarf. <laughs> um, we have a picture of a lemming and a snowshoe hare, a snowy owl, an arctic fox, a wolverine, three huskies, a sea otter, and last but not least, a muskox. Wow! You know, uh, Maple, are you sure that you are a dog? Because you look an awful lot like uh, this musk ox right here on the cover um, of this book that I'm going to read today. And so this is our new, a new book. It's Cozy by Jan Brett. And after we read Cozy, I wanted to share a couple of other books with you that are beautiful lyrical books. And these books are not normally the exciting and funny kind that I read in the morning at preschool. Um, they are very relaxing and they make really great bedtime books. So if you want to save this portion of the video until bedtime, I totally understand. So, because I don't want you to accidentally fall asleep right in the middle of the morning. Um, but anyway, we are going to get right into our first book, Cozy, and find out how these animals stay cozy in the winter. Cozy by Jan Brett. Storms rolled over the tundra when Cozy the musk ox was separated from his herd. He was used to being with his family. His mother and father had named him Cozy because his silky coat was so soft and thick. Cozy braced himself against the wind and his thick coat warmed him like a blanket. In a tussock, a mother's lemmings pups were squeaking loudly. I'm cold, I'm cold, I'm cold, 
she used a triple carry to tunnel them toward a new spot where she saw a towering mountain of fur. In no time, the Lemming family settled in to Cozy's left hoof. Shh, she whispered. Quiet voices and that muskox will never notice us. Snowshoe Hare, feeling chilly, had the same idea. Mr. Muskox, he said politely, may I wait out the storm under the protection of your very thick coat? Cozy was happy for the company and well aware that a lemming family had snuck in. He said, welcome, Snowshoe Hare, but mind those lemmings, quiet voices and gentle thumping only. Oh, look who's coming next. Snow swirled and flump! Suddenly, all grew white. Was it a clump of snow that had hit Cozy on the forehead? No, it was feathers. When Cozy opened his eyes, he was looking into big yellow ones. The eyes belonged to a snowy owl, who also had a request. Oh, magnificent Umimak, would you be so kind as to give me shelter? The wind has tumbled me terribly. Cozy knew that snowy owls and lemmings and snowshoe hares were not always fast friends, but he agreed with some conditions. House rules are quiet voices, gentle thumping, claws to yourself. And who do we see coming next? Arctic Fox's nose was turning blue. Her bushy tail wasn't warm enough. And every time she wrapped it around herself, the wind unwrapped it. Thinking Cozy would make a good windbreak, she sidled up to him. Do you mind, Mr. Muskox, if I unfreeze my nose in your thick fluff? Cozy was happy to welcome a new guest, but eyeing her sharp canines, he answered, for the harmony of all, quiet voices, gentle thumping, claws to yourself, and no biting. Look who's next. As winter went on, the storms grew worse. The wind blew and blew, and a low, humpy shape appeared, swaying and shuffling. Its coat was covered with ice balls. Shaggy beast, it growled. I fell into an ice flow and am chilled to the bone. Can you help me? Cozy was happy to invite the wolverine in, but added to, to the house rules. Quiet voices, gentle thumping, claws to yourself, no biting, and no pouncing. Cozy's new friends cleaned their coats, preened their feathers, napped, and were glad for their comfy shelter. But then, above the wind, the animals heard, yip, yip, yip. <laughs> a team of huskies on the lookout for a good thing barreled into Cozy's big bulk, flinging the creatures in all directions. Their musher, a sea otter, looked on in dismay. Hi, the lead dog grinned. House rules, chorused the jostled lemmings, snowshoe hare, snowy owl, arctic fox, and wolverine. Quiet voices, gentle thumping, claws to yourself, no biting, no pouncing, and be mindful of others. Cozy, wary of the lead dog who looked a lot like a wolf, shook, shook, shook his horns to make sure the huskies understood. A 
As time went by, the wind calmed a little, and the Arctic sun climbed higher and higher in the sky. The animals felt more at home every day. But Cozy had spring fever. I want to find my family, but how can I move about with these visitors underfoot? <laughs> Which is your favorite animal here? Resting. Look at these lemmings. You have the owl and the fox and the hare and the wolverine and the huskies. Hmm. I think the fox is pretty cute. The house rules were stretched every day. When was a nibble a bite? When was a hoot quiet or loud? There was bumping, making faces, and nobody was saying, I'm sorry. One sunny day, the lemmings were playing climb the ladder. A great chunk of Cozy's coat came off. Then another Hank came off in Snowy Owl's talons. Cozy remembered this from last year. Shedding meant it was finally spring in Alaska. Hank by Hank, all of Cozy's warm, silky winter coat drifted down the slope. Cozy's lodgers started heading to their spring homes. Cozy hadn't felt so free and breezy since he was a calf. He jumped, he gambled, and then, in the middle of a gleeful leap, he saw his herd. He ran out to join his mother, his father, his sister, and his brother. Where were you? We were worried, said his sister Fluffy. We missed you, said his brother Snuggly. I made some new friends, Cozy told them, but it was nice to get back to Musk Ox ways. They all formed a circle, babies in the middle, but Cozy felt curiously alone. Then the breeze carried squeaky and growly and whistling voices. See you next year, Cozy! Meet you when the snow flies, Cozy! The snowshoe hare thump thump thumped as they all called. We can't wait to get Cozy with Cozy! The Hundred Year Barn by Patricia McLaughlin, art by Kennard Pack. The Hundred Year Barn was built one summer in our meadow with a small stream running through. It was built by townspeople, fathers and daughters, mothers and sons, grandmothers and grandfathers, and friends. I was only five years old, and I held my mother's hand and watched. See, Jack, the horses are working hard, said my mother. I watched the horses pull wagons of brush away. The builders cleared the land to lay a foundation of gray stone. Day after day, our friends built wooden frames, leaving spaces for windows that my father would admire when the light fell across his butterscotch floors. They raised the frames side after side, up and up, 
and climb tall ladders to bolt them tightly to the chestnut beams. The sun rose hot. The cows, horses, and sheep ate grass under the shade trees and watched too. Sometimes we played by the meadow stream, jumping over it, laughing. One day my friend Martha fell in, which made us laugh more. It wasn't deep, so we all got in the stream and sat down with her. My father lost his wedding ring, a plain gold band. Everyone looked for it. I was the smallest, and I found it in the grass. I put it in my pocket, but it fell through a hole. They searched for days. It was never found. We're still married, my mother said to my father. My father smiled. Now I'm married to the barn, too, he said. When I walked out into the meadow with my older cousin Emma, she pointed to the meadow's edge. A red fox sat there, half hidden by the tall grasses. Swallows flew down and then up again, ice blue wings flashing in the sunlight. The swallows wait to nest in the barn, said Emma. The barn boards were nailed, the roof shingles were nailed, the sound of hammering echoed in the valley like the beat of music. And after many days, when the building was done, Emma climbed a ladder and placed a pine bough at the peak. Everyone cheered. There it is, all finished. They ate food at long tables set with vases of wildflowers, salads and breads and cakes. They drank cider made from my father's apples. After lunch, I fell asleep under the table. A photographer took a picture of all those who helped build the barn. My father raised a glass and thanked his friends for a summer's work. The barn will be called the Hundred Year Barn, my father said. May it last a hundred years or longer, and more than a hundred of you help build it. Cheers to you all. Later, my father would nail the photograph up on a barn wall. He wrote under the picture, The Hundred Year Barn Builders, August 1919. It took a long time to finish the inside of the barn. There was a loft for hay and bins for grain. They built stalls for the horses and a space for the hay cutter and baler. There was a pen for the cows and one for the sheep so in winter they would be warm. On the very last day of summer, the barn was painted red. Seasons went by. The cows were milked. I was old enough to help with the milking, morning and evening. The horses pulled the plow and the cutter and the baler. Sometimes I rode on the cutter with my father. When the horses' work was done, they ran in the meadow and drank from the stream and rolled in the grass. Barn lambs were born, and calves with snow-white faces. They followed me in the field and ran when I ran. Once, a lamb named Baby pushed me over and licked my face with his little tongue. The swallows swept in and out and in again, building their nests on barn ledges, just like Emma had told me when I was little. When the cousins came to visit, we slept in the barn in our sleeping bags, reading by lantern light and laughing in the dark. You tell scary stories, Jack, said one cousin. 
When it began to rain, a possum with a baby on her back sat in the doorway and waited for the rainstorm to end. We watched her until we fell asleep. The barn cat Tilly slept with us. Tilly sometimes caught mice, but when the mice played dead, she got bored. What fun was a dead mouse? She didn't care. She was well fed. She watched us make hay paths and houses in the barn. More years passed. I grew older and went away to school and came back home to help run the farm. There were weddings in the barn. My cousin Emma was married in a bright yellow dress with flowers in her hair. I married Martha, who had fallen into the stream years before. There were birthdays and fourths of July. Babies were born. New children played in the barn making hay houses. Sometimes they slept in sleeping bags, reading by lantern light and whispering in the dark. The mice and barn rats watched them, and when the children slept, the mice crept out to eat crumbs of cookies and cake. Above them, a barn owl high in the rafters watched the children sleep and the scurrying of mice. More time passed. Tilly's kittens and grand kittens played in the hay and slept in the sun. Chickens strutted in and out of the barn like colorful queens pecking at grain. Joe, our hound dog, watched them. There he is. Some nights Joe howled at the moon, a soulful sound, and the barn owl and her owlets looked down from the high rafters. There he is. In winter winds sometimes, roof shingles flew away. Sometimes tree branches hit the windows and broke the glass. But the sheep and cows and horses were warm in winter, out of the snow and the wind and the cold. Then, when spring came, we would replace the shingles and the window glass. And when it was warm and the barn looked worn, we painted it red again. It was as beautiful as the day it was built. My father called you the hundred year barn, I said one evening, because you will stand for a hundred years or more. It was a moonlit night and I picked up the broom to sweep the floor. Joe walked in with me, sniffing at something lying on the barn floor. What is it, Joe? I asked. I looked down and picked up a nest made of sweet grass and the fur of animals. It had fallen from the rafters, and the moonlight shone on something small in the nest. Something round. Something gold. Something I had lost many years ago. My father's wedding ring. I looked up at where the barn owl had perched. All these years she had looked down on everything. The animals, the children, in the quiet, in the sun, in the dark. Maybe she saw something from long ago safe for all these years in the barn. I put the ring on my finger and swept the floor smiling. And before I left the barn to sleep, I hung the wedding ring on a hook beneath my father's photograph of the hundred year barn. Goodbye, Autumn. Hello, Winter. By Kennard Pack. Hello, Late Autumn Afternoon.
just watching the children play in the leaves. Hello, leaves. Hello. Now that the wispy winds have come, we fall from the oak tree branches and are swept into the sky. Hello, robins and cardinals. Hello. We are ready to fly far, far south. Hello, horse and sheep. Hello, deer. Hello. Soon it will be cold and we'll stay inside our stables. We're eating the last of the leaves and berries. Our fur is becoming thicker for the coming winter. Hello, chrysanthemums and daisies. Hello. Even though it's colder, the sunlight warms our leaves and petals. We'll stay a little longer until winter comes. Hello, setting sun. Hello. The evenings are longer and the shadows reach farther across the streets. Hello, clouds. Hello. We cover the sky like a downy soft blanket. This is my favorite page. Look at all these beautiful twinkle lights. This town is ready for Christmas. Hello, North Star. Hello. Peeking between clouds, I shine on the darkest nights. Hello, evergreens. Hello. Our pine needle branches shiver in the wind while you sleep. Hello, silent night. Shh. I quiet the juniper and maple trees. There's the Hello, frost and icicles. Hello. We decorate the windows and hang from the eaves. Hello, snowflakes. Hello. We fall in a white misty curtain and muffle all the sounds around you. Some people are shopping. They're getting the Christmas presents. Goodbye, Autumn. Hello, winter. Have you made a snowman yet this season? We've already had a couple snows, haven't we? So before we end our story time today, I wanted to share the Jan Brett book that we read at school last week. It's called The Three Little Dassies, and it's based on the Three Little Pigs story. So if you were at school that day, we made puppets to go along with the story. So if you still have the puppets, but maybe forgot a part of the story, I'm going to tell it again 
so that you can remember the details and maybe tell it to your parents. If you weren't at Wonder School last week, I am including a link to the printout in our comments section so you can make the puppets to go along with the story. So in the story we have our three little dassies, Mimby, Pimby, and Timby, and they are rodents found in the desert in South Africa. And we have a character that is not in the traditional Three Little Pigs story, and he is the Agama Man. He's a lizard, and he watches over the little dassies. And then we have our big bad wolf character, and he is played by the eagle in this story. So um, let's get into the story and find out what happens to these three little dassies. The Three Little Dassies by Jan Brett. Hot, hot, hot. The little Dassies were almost grown up and it was time for them to find their own place. Mimby, Pimby, and Timby waved goodbye to mommy, daddy, aunties, uncles, and all their cousins and set out for the distant mountain. Come and visit us, they shouted. A place cooler, a place less crowded, a place safe from big eagles. The sisters traveled all day and all night across the Namib desert arriving at the foot of the mountain the next morning. This is where we will live, they agreed excitedly. Welcome, a squeaky voice called out from the scree. It came from a handsome, smiling, a gamma man. No one has lived here for a long, long time. Just me and a family of eagles up on the mountain. Eagles? The three little dassy shivered in the hot, hot sun. Do you see the eagles? The eagle with his sons in his nest? Where would they build their houses? Mimby eyed the long grass. These grasses will make a lovely cool house, she said, and she set to work cutting, twisting, braiding, and bundling. She finished in no time. Be near and dear, sisters, she said, crawling inside for a nap. <clears throat> Pimby spotted pieces of driftwood, silver from the sun, lying in the sand of the dry riverbed. These will make a fine wooden house, she said, and she set about collecting as many pieces as she could find. When it was finished, she hung up a hammock and called out, be near and dear, sisters, while I rest my eyes. Timby looked at the rocks around their mountain. I will make a stone house, she said, but it won't be as easy to build as the one made of grasses or sticks. And it wasn't. She had to work all day in the hot sun to get it finished in time to sleep in it that night. A gamma man had been watching them. He was happy they were staying on. He had missed having company. Look who's flying. He left the nest. The three little dassies slept late into the morning as the sun rose higher and higher in the sky. The big old eagle who lived up on the mountain stretched his wings and flew down to look for a meal for his hungry chicks. Mimby woke up hungry and went outside. Suddenly, a long winged shadow passed over her. The eagle, she cried and hurried back into her grass home. I see you, Dassy, the eagle screeched and swoop down. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll blow your house in, he squawked. 
beating the air with his wings until the grass roof sailed off. The eagle grabbed Mimby and lifted her up, up, up to his nest. But the eagle was greedy. No sooner had he dropped Mimby into the nest that than he spotted Pimby in front of her stick house far below. Two dassies would be double delicious, he thought, and down he went, feathers flying. Pimby looked up and saw him coming. She turned and ran back inside. The eagle landed and screeched, a flap and a clap and I'll blow your house in, he squawked. Twigs flew, sticks rattled, until Pimby's stick house fell apart. Then, just like Mimby, she felt herself being lifted high in the sky and plunked down in the eagle's nest. Timby looked out to call her sisters to come for a breakfast of tasty seed porridge, but instead of gra a grass house and a stick house, she saw a long shadow streaking across the rocks. I see you, Dassy. Here I come. There's Mimby and Pimby in the nest. The eagle landed and shrieked, a flap and a clap and I'll blow your house in. He flapped and clapped and beat his wings. Dust and sand blew everywhere, but the stone house didn't move. He tried again, flapping and clapping even harder. Dust and sand got in his eyes, but the stone house didn't budge. Look what's going on right here in this picture. Who is helping Mimby and Pimby? When the dust settled, the stone house was still standing, but the eagle was coughing and sneezing. His wing feathers were bent and broken, and he was missing tail feathers. Knowing when to quit, he hopped his way up to the nest. At least he had two dassies waiting for his dinner. Does he have two dassies waiting for his dinner? Ah, uh, no, he doesn't. The eagle reached his nest, but the dassies were gone. He looked down and saw them at the bottom of the mountain, heading for the stone house. It was his last chance. He streaked toward the open chimney. Oh no, we, what, we know what happens with the chimney, don't we? It's not a good idea. <laughs> Inside, the three sisters hugged each other. There's nothing like a stone house when there are eagles abundant they cried. Just then, the eagle tumbled down the chimney. I'll flap and I'll clap and I'll... A hot blast of air from the fire hit him. Fly home for a nap, he squealed. As fast as he could, he squeezed back up the chimney and flew home, all black and singed from the smoky fire. And Mimby, Pimby, and Timby never saw so much as a tail feather of that eagle ever again. Mommy, Daddy, Auntie's uncles, and all their cousins, and a gamma man too, had come to celebrate. Welcome, the sisters cried, to a place cooler, to a place less crowded, to a place safe from eagles. And if you travel to Namibia today, you will see Dassies living in stone houses with handsome Agama men looking out for them. As for the pesky eagles, they are easily spotted for their feathers are as black as soot. So thank you so much for tuning in this week and I hope you have a very relaxing, cozy day with your loved ones and I hope that you enjoyed these beautiful books and they're actually illustrated by the same artist, Kennard Pack, and 
they just make my heart happy looking at them. So I hope you find something that makes you cozy today and I will see you later. Bye.